So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything interesting that I know about the drug omeprazole. So first interesting point is that it has an alternative name that you can use, and that alternative name is Losec. So Losec was the original brand name for omeprazole, so the original drug company that discovered omeprazole called it Losec. Now, of course, it's no longer on patent. Its patent has expired, so loads of generic omeprazole exists, and most hospitals will buy the generic omeprazole because it's cheaper than the original branded omeprazole. So you'll very rarely actually see people who are on Losec. Most of them are on generic omeprazole. However, it's still a nice, cool, shorter name that you do see people use in reference to omeprazole. So they might say, I'm going to put the patient on Losec, or the patient is on Losec, rather than saying the patient is on omeprazole. So that's the first interesting fact, that, that you can use that name and most people will know what you're talking about. Some people won't, however, be aware. Nurses in particular might not recognise the name Losec. Uh, so officially its name is omeprazole. So this drug is a drug in the category of drugs known as PPIs, which stands for proton pump inhibitors. And these are drugs that we give to people to reduce acid production in the stomach. So a huge number of problems uh, arise because of too acidic environment within the stomach. People get a lot of symptoms from that, and we'll explore that in a bit more detail in just a moment. Um, so the proton pump that is referenced in this name is a protein that is present within the cell membranes of the cells within the stomach wall that produce the acid of the, stom of the stomach that is used to break down food. Um, so this protein excretes protons from the cell into the stomach's lumen and as protons are, pr are principally, they are what make something acidic. The concentration of protons is what determines the pH of a uh, solution. So the more protons that you have in a solution, the more um, acidic that solution is. So this pump is fundamentally what is responsible for making the stomach acidic and these drugs are going to bind to that proton pump and inhibit it and stop it from secreting protons and therefore they're going to decrease acid production in the stomach. Other very famous examples of PPIs that you should uh, know, most importantly lanzoprazole, extremely important example, omeprazole and lanzoprazole, certainly in the UK they are the most too heavily used, heavily prescribed PPIs. Other ones that you should know also, ezomeprazole, pantoprazole and rabeprazole. I would say of all these five, rabeprazole is the one that I see prescribed the least, at least in the UK. Ezomeprazole is very significant because it's the most easily available over the counter in the United Kingdom. Pantoprazole is a bit niche sometimes you see that prescribed, but you see it more commonly prescribed than rabeprazole, certainly. Uh, but omeprazole and lanzoprazole by far are the two most common PPIs to encounter in clinical uh, practice in the UK. So let's talk more now about why we prescribe proton pump inhibitors because a huge number of patients are on them. They are in incredibly common prescription. So the problem that they are aiming to tackle is two acidic stomachs, so two acidic contents within the stomach. And this causes problems because if that fluid inside the stomach is too acidic, it can damage the wall of the stomach, it can damage the wall of the neighbouring structures to the stomach as well. So some of the acid will leak back up into the esophagus, the lower portion of the esophagus at the bottom of the chest, and will damage the wall of the esophagus. Also, some of the acid will go through into the first part of the duodenum, and if it's too acidic, the stuff that's going into the first part of the duodenum, it will damage the wall of the duodenum. And uh, there's a fancy name that we can use in medicine for problems with stomach acid, and that's dyspepsia. So pepsia refers to the acidic uh, acid produced by the stomach, and dys means problems. So it means problems with stomach acid. Another fancy term that we can use in medicine to describe the symptoms that people get from dyspepsia is epigastric pain. So epi means around, gastric means stomach. So pain in the vicinity of the stomach. And this is exactly what you'll get if you've got a too acidic environment in the stomach. You might get pain actually in the uh, top portion of the abdomen 
which is usually pain from the stomach or pain from the duodenum, it presents there. So a sort of aching, gnawing pain is usually how um, dyspepsia is felt. Uh, so an aching, gnawing pain at the top of the abdomen, this could be a stomach acid problem. And then if the stomach acid is irritating the bottom portion of the esophagus, you again get this sort of achy, sometimes sharp, sometimes burning pain at the bottom of the chest. And people often get concerned about this. If they don't know what it is, they uh, might think that it's pain coming from the heart because it is felt in the region of the chest that is that overlies the heart. Uh, however, it's very different to cardiac pain. Cardiac pain is a heavy crushing pain. Uh, people who have felt cardiac pain know exactly what I'm talking about. For all of the people who thankfully have never experienced cardiac pain, uh, it's difficult to imagine when you haven't actually felt it for yourself, but it is a heavy crushing pain as though uh, something is strangling the heart or crushing the heart. And it's the type of pain that you can't ignore. You can't continue on with your life when you're experiencing cardiac pain. It is something that absolutely draws every might of your attention to it. Uh, and you feel as though there is something massively wrong. In contrast, the aching pain that people get from uh, esophageal irritation from stomach acid uh, is a pain that you can continue on with your daily activities with. It's something that isn't as pressing as the cardiac pain that some people get worried about it being. So epigastric pain is, if you like, an umbrella term encompassing both of these things, pain in the upper abdominal region and also pain in the lower chest region. And it's basically a way of saying that you think this pain is almost certainly acid related. So if you write patient has epigastric pain, that's basically a synonym for patient is experiencing the symptoms of having a too acidic stomach. So often acid will just cause irritation of these structures which will lead to pain. However, it can do serious damage in that it can erode holes in these structures and lead to ulcers. And we call these ulcers peptic ulcers. So again, peptic refers to the gastric acid. So these are ulcers related to gastric acid. So you can get ulcers in the esophagus, so esophageal ulcers. You can get ulcers in the stomach, gastric ulcers. And you can get ulcers in the duodenum, duodenal ulcers. And these can be very, very dangerous. One, because they can bleed and that could, if it's a bad enough bleed into the stomach or into the esophagus or into the duodenum, then you could lose a huge amount of blood into the GI tract that could potentially result in hemodynamic instability and become life-threatening. Uh, alternatively, if it's a much slower bleed and it just bleeds chronically, and then that could lead to a chronic loss of blood into the GI tract, which would eventually result in an iron deficiency anemia. Uh, finally, if that um, erosion, if that ulcer gets so deep that it erodes all the way through the wall of the esophagus or the stomach or the duodenum, then you are talking about having a GI perforation there. And that's going to be extremely dangerous because then contents will leak out through that erosion. So if it's an esophageal ulcer that's perforated, then the contents will be leaking into the mediastinum around where the lungs and the stomach, uh, sorry, the lungs and the heart are. If you've got a gastric or a duodenal perforated ulcer, then contents will be leaking out into the peritoneal cavity. And both of those scenarios will make you extremely ill. And if that perforation is not fixed quickly, uh, it will result most likely in death. So it's a surgical emergency perforated ulcers. Um, so stomach acid can be a very, very serious thing. Often it isn't a very serious thing. It just results in irritation and pain. However, that pain can turn into erosions, peptic ulcers that can potentially be extremely dangerous.